Aristotle wrote one of the first great treatises on rhetoric, aptly titled Rhetoric. This treatise was written in the 4th century BCE, and it outlines the three main rhetorical appeals, logos, pathos, and ethos. These three persuasive strategies make up the rhetorical triangle. Aristotle himself did not use the image of a triangle, but he did outline the effective uses of these three modes of persuasion. Think of the triangle as a tortilla chip on a plate of nachos. Sometimes you get a chip with a little of everything on it, cheese, meat, and guacamole. Some of the chips have only meat and cheese, or just cheese and guacamole. Every now and then you enjoy a delicious chip just dipped in the guacamole alone. This is how the rhetorical triangle works. You can form an argument using all three appeals. However, you don't always need to use all three. Sometimes you can make an acceptable argument just using a couple of persuasive techniques, like the chip with meat and cheese. Logos is the meat of an argument. When you are presenting an appeal to Logos, you present logic, facts, or truth. It is the message by which you attempt to reason with your audience. Let's call pathos the cheese, because it's the appeal to your audience's emotions. You can move your audience to anger to take action towards war. You can move your audience to fear in order to persuade them to buy a product that prevents illness. Sadness can cause an audience to donate to a cause. Or you can move your audience to believe that certain opinions or actions will make themselves and others happy. As for ethos, you can think of it as the guacamole. Guacamole is good for you, right? Its nutrition credibility is in vitamins E and C. Well, ethos is the speaker or writer's character, credibility, and authority. Ethos attempts to show you that the person or entity communicating is a valid source of information. For example, your teacher's ethos comes from the credibility of their degrees. So, you consider their opinions on particular subjects to be worthy. Nachos can be made in any combination, with more of one ingredient and less of another. Argument works this way as well. You can try out different persuasive recipes in your writing to find the mix that suits your needs and audience. Of course, the strongest arguments are usually built on points that take advantage of logos, pathos, and ethos together. Aristotle thought that logos was the most important of the three, but not all audiences will be persuaded by Logos alone. The situation profoundly changed, though, on August 21st, when Assad's government gassed to death over a thousand people, including hundreds of children. The images from this massacre are sickening. Men, women, children lying in rows, killed by poison gas, others foaming at the mouth, gasping for breath, a father clutching his dead children, imploring them to get up and walk. If we fail to act, the Assad regime will see no reason to stop using chemical weapons. As the ban against these weapons erodes, other tyrants will have no reason to think twice about acquiring poison gas and using them. Over time, our troops would again face the prospect of chemical warfare on the battlefield. And it could be easier for terrorist organizations to obtain these weapons and to use them to attack civilians. If fighting spills beyond Syria's borders, these weapons could threaten allies like Turkey, Jordan, and Israel. And a failure to stand against the use of chemical weapons would weaken prohibitions against other weapons of mass destruction and embolden Assad's ally, Iran, which must decide whether to ignore international law by building a nuclear weapon or to take a more peaceful path. That's my judgment as Commander-in-Chief. But I'm also the President of the world's oldest constitutional democracy.